and YouTube, how you doing? It is a Friday morning, <laughs> amen, 5.45 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless everybody. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we are out of New Orleans. And as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you for all that you do for this ministry and how you support us in prayer and by watching the video. But we thank God for that. And please continue to do that. And also, we ask you to share this on your page. Good to see you, Sister Bridges. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Sister Moretta. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Salmons, God bless you. God bless you. Brother Reno, my main man. God bless you, man of God. God bless everybody. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. Sister Williams, welcome this morning, Friday morning, getting ready for the weekend. God bless everybody. And also invite people out. And you know you can do a watch party while you're uh, watching. You can hit that watch party. And then you, your friends that are connected to you, good to see Sister Williams. Sister Diane, God bless everybody. Um, they'll be able to watch as well. Prophet James Summers, God bless you. God bless you. So welcome, welcome. Go ahead, hit that share button. Go ahead and get those uh, watch parties started. And also uh, invite many people out so we can have new faces that come on the ministry as well. They can be blessed by this word. We're going to do a part two today. Living while raising Cain. This is a life-changing message. Uh, good to see you, Sister Tate. Uh, life-changing message, living while raising Cain. It's really dealing with the dichotomy of life from spiritual and natural and learning how to live with natural circumstances, with things that happen in our flesh, through our flesh. And so it is really a a, a change, uh, as we say, a, a chain breaker when you understand how to live with Cain. Every one of us have a thorn in our side, something that is with us that God has not delivered us from, but showed us how to live with. And so, and I'm going to talk about those things. And we're going to pick up next week as well because there's so much I want to share with you. I'm excited about this because it's one of the greatest learning tools that I have learned in life. Uh, a lot of things happen to me in life. I've been through a lot of things. But the, the key to my success in victory and peace of God was learning how to live with what God had given me. How to live in that moment. Uh, and, and many times we reap what we sow. There are consequences of our actions. There's consequences of being uh, alive based upon uh, Adam and Eve sinning. So we're born a sinner. You're born with a circumstance. The day you come out of the womb, there's something that you need to understand and that you must be born again. So how to live with all of those dynamics of life. And so we're going to be talking about that again today. Very powerful teaching. Please watch the replay as much as possible and share this on your page. Good, good morning. Good morning to everybody. We're going to go into prayer. We are a people of prayer, a people of praise, and a people of power. We also are a people of favor people of faith and the people of finances. So we're going to go and, and acknowledge God as our Lord and as our Savior, as we always do every morning before we ask of you of anything, we must give him thanks. And so prayer, it's about lining yourself up with God so you can understand his will in your life on a daily basis. Father, we thank you right now for you being our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for having a perfect plan. We thank you, Lord, that you are such a loving father that you said we can call you Abba, we can call you Father. You even told us when we pray, say our Father. Thank you, Lord, that regardless of what we may be dealing with in our natural circumstances, we have a spiritual Father that loves us, and we acknowledge you as the Lord and Savior of our life. We acknowledge you as our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. We acknowledge you as our provider. We trust you for everything. We thank you, Lord, that you are the lover of our soul and a center of our attractions. Everything that we long for and desire come out of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us a brand new set of eyes how to see from the spiritual realm that is effective on the earth. You have given us a new set of ears, and by faith, we can hear you. You said faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How can he hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he's been sent? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have a strategy, a plan, a perfect plan for imperfect people to bring, to bring us to a perfect place. And God, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Also, Lord, you said that you have never left us nor forsake us. And when you sat on the right hand of the Father, you sent a comforter to us. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. That always speaks to us. You even told us in your word that it makes intercession for us with moans and groans that cannot be uttered. 
Thank you, Lord, for a paraclete. Thank you, Lord, for a spiritual lawyer who's by our side to interpret our situations and to already reveal to us who you are, God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have a new mind. You said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And you said that by this renewing of the, of the mind, Lord, that we can be transformed. We can prove what is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Oh, God, we thank you. I thank you this morning for our life. I thank you this morning for my wife. I thank you, Lord, for family. I thank you, Lord, for 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 establishing uh, steps in my life. And Lord, I thank you for these people who are listening on Facebook today, who are being blessed by your word, who have assigned themselves and been committed to the ministry. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for fathers and mothers spiritually who have helped us on this road, down this line, walking this path. I thank you, Lord, for leadership, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every situation that has helped build us to become stronger in you. God, we are mature enough now that we can thank you for the so-called good and bad. We can thank you for the ups and the downs. God, we can thank you for the journey, for you have been with us. God, we've learned how to take the, stepping, the, the stumbling blocks and make them a stepping stone. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we have learned Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good. And so, God, we bless you this morning just for being a kind father. And God, we ask you to release to us today. You told us that we can ask, and if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door shall be open. You told us, Lord, that if we ask, ask of these things, you will give us, for you are much more than a natural father who knows how to give what the son asks. And God, we thank you, Lord. And so, God, we ask you for our daily bread, today. Reveal to us. Give us a revelation of today's matter. What we should be in today. How we should respond. What we should say. How we should move. Who are we designed to touch today? What life are we designed to bring about a change? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this daily bread. Thank you, Lord, that this word will become a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Oh, God, we bless you that no weapon form against us shall prosper. But, God, we want to acknowledge our assignment. Lord, allow our anointing and grace to be fulfilled in our life today for this hour that somebody's life may be touched. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Allow us to be a part of, of the visual of seeing someone give their life over to you. God, I am excited that today, not only are you going to bless us and give us a design plan, but you're going to save a soul. Somebody is going to be snatched from the gate of hell today because they've met you, because they've been awakened to who you are. And God, we bless you for it, for the saving of the souls. Oh God, we thank you that someone is going to be free from freedom. Uh, I mean, free from bondage. They're going to come out of every prison of their mind, prison of their spirit. That is going to be a great a step. God, I am convinced that your way works. I am convinced that your way is always proven by our lives, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that we can stand like a David in the front of a Goliath and we know that who we serve will give us victory. We fight not for it, but from it. Thank you, Lord, that we are victorious because of what you did over 2,000 years ago. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the cross, the power of the blood. We thank you, Lord, for the power of resurrection, that it can raise anything. Thank you, Lord, that you have taught us through the word that you can speak to a dead thing and it'll come forth. Oh, God, we thank you that we have the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Oh, God, we bless you, Lord, that every demonic activity that tries to come, we can trample it under our feet. We have been given up authority against every unclean spirit. So God, we activate every gift that is in our lives today. We activate the mind, the willingness, the hunger, and the thirst for you. Give us more. Allow us to never be satisfied. We want to come to know you. Come to know you, God. Oh God, God, in the power of the resurrection, but most of all, in the fellowship of your suffering. And God, we bless you. We bless you today. Now Lord, bring us one. You pray that we become one as you and the Father is one. Make us one. One family. Family, one Lord, one baptism, one teaching God, one understanding of the clarity of your will for our lives. Allow us not to be strangers and walk in a place not knowing where we go, but let us walk as people with clarity of knowledge, God, knowing that you have already directed our path, God. You said if we acknowledge you in all our ways, you are you 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 will acknowledge what we acknowledge to you, and you will direct our path. We can trust in you with all our heart. And God, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Yes, God, I, I agree with Sister y Yolanda that we would claim total healing from the soul, from the mind, from the spirit. Total, total understanding of your will. Walking with clarity. Walking as a living testimony. Oh, God, allow us to testify. God, we've been through, but let us, we raise our hands like a child in class. Lord, let me testify of how good you are. Let us become a testimony of how powerful you are and how rich you are and how you dwell within man. Oh, what is it about man that you're so mindful of him, that you've chosen us above everything else, God? We were made in your image and in your likeness, and we thank you. We honor, we are aware of what you have decided to do through us, and God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor in your name, the power to walk right, the power to talk right, the power to live right, the power to stand, the power to move, the power to push, the power to pull. Oh, God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for every pregnancy in the spirit realm that's given birth to ministries, that's given birth to understanding, that's given birth to the mysteries of the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Thank you, Lord, for the pillars that are in our lives. Hallelujah. The pillars that stood before us, the cloud of witnesses that held on to faith and held on to what you have shared with them. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing, a fresh touch, a fresh move, or allow the winds to blow through our life. The Spirit of God move in us. Oh, because when you breathe into man, man become a living soul. Never allow us to be dead and stagnant, but allow us to be moved, God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, set us on fire that the world may see how you are burning, you are purifying us and making us whole again. We thank you, Lord, for union and oneness and marriage. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we speak this word today, allow it to change our minds. Allow it to challenge us until we change, that we'll learn how to walk, 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 walk in the dignity and the integrity of your word. Oh, God, we bless you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to Divine Insight Ministry. God bless you. We're going to do a part two today on living while raising Cain. This is a life-changing message. So I would uh, uh, I would beseech you, as Paul would write, please share this on your page. Hit that share button now. Go ahead and get it out the way. And, and do a, a, a watch party because the world need to hear what God is saying. God, there's a word for the world, for the nation. I'm called to the nation, not just the congregation, but I'm called to the nation. I need you to help me evangelize this world. And so please hit that uh, share button and do a watch party so people can learn how to live while raising Cain. This message this week and next week will change your life forever. You'll know how to live with things that doesn't get better for you. Things that may uh, give you a long time to, that are wrestling with you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Some consequences of your own decisions, how to live with them without letting uh, just because you're saved don't mean you don't reap what you sow. But you, but just because you reap what you sow doesn't stop your destiny. And so I'm going to show you how you may birth a Cain. You may have an Ish, Ishmael in your family. You may have an Ishmael in your marriage. You may have an Ishmael in, on your job. You may have a Cain, watch this, watch this, uh, in your church. But I'm going to show you how to still live. And fulfill your purpose and to walk in your destiny and do, and will not abort your anointing because you gave birth to a cane. I'm going to show you how to live while raising Cain. And I'm going to show you how to understand the four keys of how to live life. Life is a mystery. And I've been talking about that. If you haven't watched yesterday, go back and watch it. I haven't had a chance to put it on uh, YouTube yet. I got to catch up on some videos, but I'll do that as soon as possible. But how to live victorious with a scar. Many people have had surgery and the, and the disease is gone, but the scar is there. And how to live proudly with the scar. Proudly, not, not with your head hold down, with your head held up, okay? I'm going to show you how to live with the cane. And so I talked about a lot of things yesterday. I talked about uh, homosexuality and how a lot of people really, really have a desire to love God, but they wrestling with the identity of are they straight or are they gay? I, am I a man or I'm a woman? And how to live with that and not let that abort your calling. I talked about... Uh, three or four days ago, women who had abortions and they're still living with the guilt. I'm going to show you how you can't change what happened, but you can change how you see it. And I'm going to show you how to, because many of us have canes. And, and the major problem is we don't know how to raise cane. Cane is something that God won't let you die, won't let you kill. 
No one is allowed to kill Cain. And so it is the grace of God. Cain represents where the grace of God is being applied. Cain represents where the love of God is being applied. Cain represents where faith is a necessity to have in order to live with Cain. And Cain is where truth must be applied or Cain will kill what's able in you. Okay, and so you should know the story that Cain was the first child of, of Adam and Eve, and, and they had twin sons, Cain and Abel, and Cain killed what was Abel, and there's a Cain in you that will kill what's Abel, and a lot of times that did happen in your life like it happened in Adam and Eve, but that don't stop your destiny in life. Cain's blood is still speaking. There's some things that died in your life, but they're still alive. And they died in the natural aspect of it. They're, they died in the natural, uh, let's say, uh, uh, qualifications or, let's say, uh, availability. But the voice of Abel is still speaking. The blood of Abel is still speaking. And so I'm going to show you how to honor the blood of Abel, honor some things that are speaking greater since they died naturally, since they died naturally, okay? Because there's some things that, that we as Christians, we deal with that is not an easy answer for. Okay, not an easy answer for. Uh, if your father raped you, real story, your father raped you, touched you, that's a real situation. And there's some things that died in you, in you, when that happened to you. But the blood of that situation, the purpose that you had prior to being raped can still speak. That's what it's called a testimony. We're overcome by the blood of the lamb. You got to know the power when blood is released, when life, when life is released out of death. Blood is, the Bible says that life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. And so there are things that your bloodline will speak out of terrible situations, but it becomes a powerful entity when God hears it out of the ground, your testimony, okay? So I'm going to show you how to live with that, but I'm also going to show you how to live with Cain, things and people who have did terrible things to you or is a result of your choices and you can't change them. A lot of parents, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. A lot of parents, <clears throat> especially mothers, they, they, they're wrestling with, because they look at their son, they look at their daughter, and they see the man that raped them to have that beautiful baby. There's a lot of babies that don't know in this world that daddy raped me and, 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 and you is a result of it. And this is why there's a lot of conflict in the home of how they treat you over their other brothers and sisters. But I'm going to show you how to live with Cain and still have a wonderful life. You've been raped and still get married and have a wonderful life. And you and your husband can have a wonderful level of intimacy because you can live with Cain but still live. Okay? How to raise it. How to raise. Okay? And they're thorns in your side. And, they, and Cain has so many layers of it. Cain is in so many different rooms. But we don't care. Because God said to us before Cain was ever created. He said to us, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. You had a word in your spirit before you experienced bankruptcy, before you experienced abortion, before you did abortion, before your dad touched you, before you was in your mother's womb, you had a calling on your life. You were chosen. So Cain don't stop your destiny. And that's what I want you to know. Cain does not stop your destiny. You could be in bed with somebody right now. You ain't got no business being in bed with. But I'm telling you that God is going to get you up out of that situation. He's going to show you how to fulfill your purpose. Because see, sometimes in, in, in being a Christian, we want to preach the perfect scenario. Well, we, none of us are living a perfect scenario. Your life is not perfect. You don't have everything together and everything in line. And if you tell the truth, your marriage didn't start out perfect. Your ministry didn't start out perfect. Your mom and dad didn't do everything right. And you have to live with some cane. But that don't stop what's in you. It don't stop what's in you. Woo! Yeah, you was raised in the projects. Yes, you might have been wild and crazy. Yes, you, you had a, a, a murdering spirit on you. I don't care what it is. I want you to know that you can live while raising 
came and I want to help you with something else. And you will always have something that's going to make you get on your knees. It's always going to be a thorn in your flesh. And God is not going to deliver you like he told Apostle Paul. But my grace is sufficient. Have you learned that yet? Have you learned that? That regardless of what you may have been going through, is going through, have come out of, that four things have never changed in your life concerning God. His love, his grace, are you hearing me? The faith and truth. Oh, God, you better understand it, okay? Very key. So, uh, and I thank God it's Friday because I hear my voice <clears throat> about to go. So, we're going to walk this out, okay? Point number one. Go ahead, hit that share button. I feel like shouting already. I tell you, the greatest things I've ever experienced in life, that Cain don't stop my destiny. Oh, God. Cain has started with a C, but there's a D after a C, which represents my destiny. My destiny is the next step after I go through a Cain. All right? We're going to walk through it. I'm going to bless you today. God going to bless you today, and your life going to never be the same. Good to see you, Pastor Cook. God bless you. God bless you. Watch this. Point number one. Marriage is a mystery. Marriage is a mystery. Marriage is nothing but the union of two coming together as one to become to fulfill God's purpose. That's marriage. Marriage is the union of a two. There are many marriages. Faith and love is married. Marriage is a mystery. Everything in your life is about marriage. Everything. Sowing and reaping is a marriage. Giving and receiving is a marriage. Heaven and earth is a marriage. Right and wrong is a marriage. If you learn this, you'll learn the keys of life. You're never going to have an up without experiencing some downs. You're never going to have a low without experiencing some, some, some highs. You're never going to be able to walk in light unless you first came out of darkness. And the evening and the morning was the first day. He didn't say the first day was all daylight and the first night was all midnight. He said in the evening and the morning was the first day. You got to understand in your life how to balance and how to live with your evening and your morning and still be with God. See? So I'm going to teach you today about the power of twos, the union. This is marriage. This is what it's all about. It's a marriage. It's a marriage. Go out in twos. Go out as a married couple. Understand the purpose of life. When you get this mystery and you understand this mystery of marriage, you'll be more faithful to a marriage. You'll know how to stay in it when it gets rough. You'll know how not to quit on life. I didn't understand marriage as a mystery. So, so in many times in my life, the devil tried to get me to take my life out. He tried to get me to have a spiritual divorce from life. But I'm married. I'm married to life. God put me in this world. See? And so you have to understand that it's a mystery. Now, you will go through the mystery very confused if you don't get the keys. You got to get the keys to, the, to life or keys to marriage. Marriage, because why, why is marriage so important to God? Because it reflects God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It reflects the unity. God is about family. Marriage comes through family. Before Adam and Eve come together, they can't be a Cain, they can't be an Abel. But there's a reason why this, this first family produced twins. A Cain and Abel, because inside of life is a Cain, and inside life is an Abel. Inside life is the breath of God, but also in life, inside of life is the mind of the flesh. This is life. You can't get past it. You can't get past it. I don't care how anointed you are, you're going to have to deal with it. And, uh, and your church can be wonderful, but your house can be terrible. Your house can be wonderful, but your church can be terrible. Because you're going to have ups and downs, lows and highs, ins and outs. You're going to have that. That's called life. Some philosophy calls it the yin and the yang. But the key to it is you have to understand that. And God purposely put you, made you in dust. Your spirit. You made in the image of likeness of God, but when it came to your form, he used the dust of the ground. It was the marriage. Let us make man. He just wasn't talking to the union of himself. He also was talking to the dust. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And so it was prophetic that I'm going to put man in dust. And this is going to cause complications. And he tell him that. You're now like us, knowing good and evil. You're now like us. You have a knowledge of ups and downs. You're now like us. You are in the marriage and you will see the complications, right, of trials and tribulations. But don't forget that I told you from the spiritual place that you will have dominion. So it don't matter how much good you know or how much evil you know, you can still have dominion. 
You can still have dominion over the fish and the seas, the fowls of the air. And really, this is your work. Your purpose down here is to cultivate the earth realm. It's to cultivate the, the, the darkness until you move into the marvelous light. It is to show you how to bring heaven on earth. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. That's why you're here. This is your earth assignment. It's to bring the marriage together, but show that divinity leads the house. Spiritual leads the house, okay? So marriage is a mystery, okay? And Paul talks about that. This is the mystery of the church. This is the mystery of the marriage. Mysteries, and you got to know mysteries. He spoke to the people who were not uh, apostles, he spoke to them in parables, but he said, unto you, I speak unto you in mysteries. And you will never be able to have the peace of mind that passeth all understanding until you understand the mystery of this marriage. You are in a marriage. Whether you're single or whether you're married, you are in a marriage. <laughs> you are in life. <clears throat> Point number two, you must pray and embrace every day. And just put the last thing I'm going to say here. Because the, the point is really this, keys to the to the, to the uh, mystery. You got to understand the keys to the mystery. That's point number two, sweetheart. Keys to the mystery. Remember that. This is some of the stuff I talked about yesterday. Okay? And you're absolutely right, Miranda. God, I thank God because the people are growing. That's, this is what Jesus represents. The marriage. God himself wrapped himself up. He said, prepare for me a body. That was the marriage. And he came down as Jesus, the Christ. Jesus, Christ is not his last name. Christ is his position to who he is in God. It is his anointing. It is the mindset. Christ has the mind. The, what's the mind? The mind of Christ. It's the crystals, the anointed one. That's the marriage. You got to know the keys to it. Jesus knew the keys to the mystery of marriage. This is how he was able to walk his life out and not ever submit to the flesh because he understood the keys to the mystery. You got to understand the keys. You'll always be frustrated on any job you ever get in. You'll never be happy. And I don't care how many times you get married. I don't care how many boyfriends and girlfriends you have. You'll never be content in a relationship if you don't understand the keys to the mystery. You got to know the keys. The keys are, you'll never be able to deal with people. You'll never be able to work with people and maximize your potential. You'll never, without these keys, you will always run into frustration. You'll always run into complications. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't understand the keys. You got to walk these keys out. And so first of all, you got to know, what's the purpose of keys? The purpose of keys is to unlock things. You, God has given us keys. This is, again, here's the marriage. Watch this. He said to Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. The mystery to marriage cannot be unlocked by flesh and blood. Knowledge cannot unlock the keys to marriage based upon mental understanding. It must be, and I'm kind of moving ahead of myself now, it must be by revelation. Revelation. Upon this rock, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to me, but my father revealed. The word revelation, uh, uh, it comes from the unveiling, to pull back the curtain. Like on the movie, the TV show back in the day when I was growing up was called The Price is Right. And, and they would have things behind the curtain. And then Bob Barker would say, you're right. And then the curtain would come back and the car was always there. But it, it, now it is revealed what's behind the curtain. I think it's, it's the Greek word Apollo. Uh, uh, Apollo something. It's, it's, it's spelled A-P-O-L. It's kind of complicated to pronounce. But it deals with uh, how to reveal the revealing of something. That's behind the curtain. There are things in life. In order for you to raise Cain, you have to be re the keys to the mystery have to be revealed to you, or you'll always be frustrated with Cain. Okay, you'll always be frustrated with Cain. You 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 you'll be mad. You'll feel like uh, life is unfair because you're dealing with Cain's. But when you understand the keys to unlock to unlock these mysteries, to learn how to live. See, this is why a lot of religions cannot embrace Christianity. <clears throat> they cannot embrace Christianity. You know why? Because how do I love my enemies? They can't unlock that. Man, I, I, I tell you, the people of God, you're speaking so much. Right. 
He went to hell and he got the keys. Exactly. The keys of death, hell, and the grave. Very key that we understand that. Keys. He's, again, back to my point. He said to Peter, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church. Who is the church? We are the church to call out ones. So upon this revelation of who I am, you cannot be built up in God until you have a revelation of who he is. You must have a revelation of who he is. He said, upon this rock, upon this revelation, what revelation? That you are the Christ. He didn't say thou art Jesus. Jesus was his human name. It was his legal name on earth. But Peter didn't say thou art Jesus. There was a lot of Jesus. There was a lot of that. He says, but but he says, but thou art the Christ. That's the revelation. The revelation is the mindset that you must have in order to walk out this life. I am doing what I'm doing in this earth. I am mastering this marriage because I have a mindset called Christ. Christ is the mindset. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, living with Cain. Watch this. Jesus lived in the flesh, but never submitted himself to the flesh. He lived in it, but he never submitted himself to it. That's the mystery. But he understood. But he said to him, watch this. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The responsibility of us being built is upon the mindset of Christ. Christ will do that. I will build my church. We try to build churches that Christ says that's his responsibility. I will build my church. God is building me. God is building you. No man can build you. If God is not there, then, he, then you can't be built. What does it mean to a man? If you do this, it says a man who tries to build, he, he, his labor is in vain if he's not doing it God's way because God is the builder of our souls. He says, but, but, but I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom, access to a king. What is kingdom? Kingdom is a mindset. Kingdom is a mindset. And kingdom is the mindset to how to rule how to rule Cain. How to rule Cain. It's a mindset. Okay? Very key. When you are under a kingdom, there is no voting. There is no Democrat and Republican under a kingdom. Your flesh doesn't have a right to have anything to say because he is under a kingdom mindset. I give you access. Access to unlock the mindset to rule in this earth. So repent, that means to change the way you're thinking. For the kingdom, these keys, this access is at hand. You should be shouting right now. I just gave you another key. So we got to understand, point number one, marriage is a mystery. Point number two, keys to the mystery. Keys. So Lord, let me be aware of how to activate every key in my life. Okay, what are these keys? I talked about it yesterday, and then I'm going to move into uh, fresh teaching for the day. I just want to review some things. I want you to get them. What are the keys to the mystery? What are the keys to the mystery that is the marriage? Because marriage is a mystery. But I have keys to the marriage or keys to the union or keys to understand everything that God joins me to. If you learn these keys, you'll know why you have kids. You'll know how to handle your kids. If you have keys, you'll know how to be effective on your job. You'll know how to work in your community. If you understand these keys, you can handle any situation God has joined you to. This is a necessity, okay? What are these keys? Key number one, love. Key number one, love. Key number two, grace. Key number three, faith. Key number four, truth. Four keys, love. Grace, faith, truth. Four keys to understand union, okay? Now, I'm, I'm, I want you to hear this, okay? And we're going to walk a little heavy today. Watch this, as we usually do. Whatever Cain you are dealing with in your, in your life, if you don't have the revelation of God's love, that Cain will destroy you. That way of thinking, Cain's mindset, will have you sabotage yourself. If you don't understand the love of God for your life, your cane will change your gender in your mind. It would have you hating your family. It will make you think you are worthless and you are nothing. The cane mindset all is enmity against who you are in the spirit. The carnal mindset, which is representative of cane of this flesh, it will destroy everything 
in your belief system that makes you really who you are in God. But when you have a revelation of God's love, then you understand that it don't matter how much Cain look like he's telling the truth, the love of God can restore me. The love of God can endure. It suffers all things that Cain brings. Love endures all things that Cain speaks about. Love, love, hope of all things against the negative of Cain. So this key of love, many people that you, uh, that we know are dealing with a Cain in their life. And the problem with, you know why you have not been able to help your child that's struggling with their Cain? Or you have not been able to help your husband who's struggling with his cane. Or you have not been able to help your wife who's struggling with their cane. You know why? Because you don't have a real revelation of God's love. I told you these keys have to be revealed to you. You got to have a revelation. So we're losing people who are struggling with Cain. If everybody have a Cain, your Cain may not be gay. Your Cain may not be a murderer. Your Cain may not be a liar. But your Cain may be depression. Your cane may be arrogance. Your cane may be self-centeredness. Your cane may be stubbornness. Your cane may be unforgiveness. But without the love of God in our lives, not only would the person who's dealing with Cain cannot overcome, but the people who's so-called helping you, you can't help people that you don't have an unconditional love for. You can't. Because the cane, the cane is too strong. For ordinary love. The Cain, he's too powerful. His hate, only the love of God can handle the hate that Cain carry. And so I'm going to talk about it next week. With Cain, he carries a mindset of hate and jealousy. Okay? And so you got to love. Because there are people that need the love of God from you. But they want to kill you because they're jealous of where you are in God. When you spend time with God, you provoke jealousy. And so you got to have a, a, the unconditional godly love in order to help people deal with the cane, even yourself. If you don't love God and love yourself, your cane will destroy you. But when you have a revelation of God's love for me, that even though I'm in a pig's pen, God loves me. I can be dirty, nasty. God loves me. I can be selfish, every irritistical, all these things. God loves me. Oh, my God. When I know the revenue of God's love, that love will wake me up to how Cain has deluded my thinking. See? But I got to have a revelation. That's a key. And so we're not helping people who have issues because you don't love the homosexuals. You don't love the lesbians. You don't love the murderers. You don't love the adulterers. You don't love these people. You don't love the rapists. And, and most of the times, you don't love yourself because if you can love yourself and be honest about how nasty and selfish and you got a cane in you, then you can love the cane in me until we know how to rule. Who came? Because we can't kill him. You can't kill him, but you won't speak. Cain, you going to church. Cain, you going to prayer. You can't get rid of him every morning you wake up. Don't never think you pass anything. You not pass nothing. Only reason why you made it is because of the love of God. And you haven't made it. You're making it. Real salvation is continuously. We are being saved continually. It's the saving of the soul. It's the ing. But if you ever let up on okay, Cain, if you ever not, if you lose the revelation of God's love, if you forget the revelation of God's love, Cain will show back up again. You got to have a deep revelation of God's love. And that love, why? Because, because it, 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 it searches the riches of God. That love is deep, got to be rooted and grounded in love. And so we're trying to help people with their cane, but we don't even have the revelation of what it's going to take. You got to lay your life down. You may lose your life fighting Cain, but I'd rather die, die in fighting for the dominion that God gave me than to live under the rulership of Cain. Woo! You got to have a revelation of God's love. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Because I got to restore you, Adam. And I'm going to come down as the last Adam because I know that you've given birth to some things. And there's some things that we have decided by our own will 
and you got to quit condemning yourself because Cain is your baby. Cain come from your decision, but that don't stop God's decision for you. Your decision don't change God's decision. Your decision won't get God to change his mind. He loves you. And most people don't have a real revelation of God's love. He said, if you make your bed in hell, Job, I'll come down and get you because I love you. What matter of love is this? And a man lay his life down. See, that's the first key. And I don't want to take too much time. I already did. Already. The second key is grace. 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 You have been given an unmerited favor. Grace is the empowerment to handle your cane. And see, we're struggling with this because we don't want to apply love and grace to people who got cane. When it comes to us, you let us get caught in something. You let us, you let our life get exposed. If everything you've ever did in your life or if everything you've ever thought of, if God had designed man, that there's a monitor on your mind. If God would have made us with a monitor on your mind and wherever you go, whatever you're thinking about or have thinking about, Everybody can see it. If that was the case, nobody would come outside. Because there's all kind of stuff that is have been on our minds or is on our mind. But it's the grace of God. We're sin about grace much more about. Is this a license to sin? No. This is grace and love so that you can win. Somebody said yesterday, I forgot who it was. It's not, it's not a license to sin, but it is God's love and grace to win. You will win even with a cane. How? Because of God's grace. Grace. All of us should be dead and it went for grace. God, God says, I repented I ever made man. I'm the first person that repent. I'm rethinking this thing. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. You got to get close enough to God. Look him in his eyes and he will tell you. If you look God in his eyes, when you are at your worst, if you look God in his eyes, you will see he, he's not saying it's over for you. You got to see grace when it looked like it's over for me. I'm too bad. It's over for me. I messed up too many times. It's not because grace is there to help you win. Did you give birth to a cane? Yes. Did you sleep with a handmaid? Yes. Did you do these things? Yes. But is my destiny over? No. Why? Because you've been given grace. Take off the G for the race. You have been given grace for the race. And this is a key. This is a key to help me get back up again. I'm not turning over. Many times in my life, I say, I'm done. I messed up too much. I've gone too far. I'm just talking to you. Got too many soul ties. I've been broken. I've been wounded. I've been stabbed. All these things. And God said, I don't care what you've been through, Jenkins. I've given you grace to conquer this. I say, God, well, there's some things that are exposed. It don't matter what they know. It matter what I've already decided for you. See? So grace. Faith. Faith is the access into the unseen. Faith gives us the ability to pull from a place that has never been touched and bring that into the place that we have been touched. It's the access into the heavenly realms. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith is a key to handling. I got to have faith when it looked like Cain is winning, when it looked like Cain is destroying me, when, when Cain has killed some things that were able in me. I got to have faith that I can rise again. I have to have faith that I can come out of this dead situation. I got to have faith. Faith. See, some of you are in something right now. You say the marriage is over. The papers are signed. But you got to have faith. What did God say? They fired me. I lost the house. But do you still have faith? What are you still hearing? Because Cain wants you to think it's over, but your destinies are over. I don't care if it's dead. Show me where he lay. He's, he's stink by now, Lord. He's been in the grave four days. Well, show me where he lay. I'm going to call his name. He going to hear me in a dead situation. Faith says that dead things can respond. Woo! See? Because that's the key. That's the key to the mystery. How do, I, how do I be successful in this marriage, in this ministry, in my life, in my family? It's a mystery. But if I know, if I know the revelation of a revelation of love, 
a revelation of grace, a revelation of faith, and then the last thing, the revelation of truth. Truth will set me free. Truth will set me free. I get a revelation. I know the truth. See, the devil can't beat me up no more about my dad because I know the truth. I know that everything my dad didn't do in my life, he wasn't supposed to do. I got the truth now. So I can live with it. He wasn't there for graduation. He wasn't there for this. He wasn't there for that. He wasn't there. I used to be, I used to cry when I was talking about it. I, I played all over the world and my dad wasn't in the audience. I know the truth. God was building something. I can tell the story without crying anymore. I know the truth. I got to live with the memory, but the memory brings me to a place of God's goodness. It brings me to a place of truth. If memories are not taking you to a place of truth, then the devil has used them and you haven't learned how to raise your cane. Because I can't change what happened. I can't change what happened, but I can change how I see it. If you change how you see things, how you see things will change. Those are the four keys. <clears throat> point number three. That was all point number two. Point number two was keys to the mystery, and I gave you those four keys. Love, grace, faith, and truth. Point number three. Understanding mysteries come by revelation. I've been talking about it. They come by revelation. You got to spend time with God. The more, the more time you spend with God, the more God reveals to you. If you walk with God, he'll talk to you. If you walk with God, he'll talk to you. He's a talker, but you got to walk with him. Walk means how can two walk together unless they agree? You have to agree. Okay? So point number three, understanding mysteries come by revelation. Understanding mysteries. Okay? So you see how they're connecting? Point number one, marriage is a mystery. I left off the last word was mysteries. Point number one. Point number two, God gives you keys to the mystery that marriage is. Marriage is a mystery, and that marriage has keys in it to the mystery. What are those four keys? Love, grace, faith, truth. Point number three, the revelation of those, how to understand those ministries come through revelation. So understanding mysteries come by revelation. How do you understand the mystery? It will be revealed to you. Flesh and blood has not revealed it, but my Father, which is in heaven. No man come unto the Father unless the Spirit draws him. What the, what's the purpose of the Holy Ghost? It's to lead you and guide you to all truth. It's to bring revelation. The more you receive the Holy Ghost, the more revelation you have of God. Because he reveals. Okay? Very key. Revelation. Okay? That's point number three. This is, this is tied to point number three. Rep, the purpose of revelation is to unite us directly to God. When, when you receive revelation, it, it, it directs you directly to God. It unites you directly to God. There's, there is a uniting. Whenever there's revelation, the real reason people say, well, how did you get so much wisdom in revelation? I'm just talking. The real reason why how I received, Robert Jenkins received so much revelation. You know where it came from? I just talked to God every day. I was so troubled as a kid. I was a troubled kid. Troubled. I mean trouble. When I say trouble, I mean trouble to the to the maximum of trouble that I could experience. But every day, I was five years old and I walked to school, to my elementary school. We walked in the days I was going to school. And I would pick up friends. Uh, I lived 113 West Dewey, Youngstown, Ohio. I lived at 113. My cousin lived at, I think, 119. His name was Calvin Thomas. They called him Smoke. He's still alive today in Youngstown. I would pick him up, walk three or four houses down, and then I'd pick up him. My mother would call his mother. Is he there yet? Yes, he just, Calvin just walked out the door. Then we walked down to maybe 10 more houses and pick up another person at the corner. And then I walk around the corner and my best friend who I was raised up with, Charleston Glenn, living to this day, I would get him. My mother would call his mother and we would, we would connect. We would do like, instead of car pullies, we would do walk pullies. And on the way walking, I would sing a song to God. I was so troubled. I would write a song. I was a songwriter before I ever played drums or piano. Songs would come, and I would have tears in my eyes. My mother friends, sometimes I would be walking home from school. My mother would have friends over at the house. And, and one particular lady, she would look at me and say, Pat, my mother's name was Pat. She would say, Pat, that boy been with God. 
She could see the tears on my eyes. How did I get revelation? Because I walk with God. When you unite with God, it reveals revelation. Okay? This is how revelation, revelation automatically unites you with God. Miracles unites you with men. When you do miracle, that makes the man be connected to the man. See? When somebody put a miracle on you, that connects you to them, which connects to the God. Because it's here. Miracles is here. Okay? It's, hor it's hor horizontal. But, re but revelation is vertical. It's vertical. See? And so I, I say like this. God inhales worship. He breathes it in. When we worship God, they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost so powerful today. So he inhales revelation. God breathes it in. Because they that worship, worship God in spirit and in truth. He breathes it in, but he exhales revelation. This is why when he breathed into man, man became a living soul. The psyche of man. All of a sudden, understood the wisdom and the knowledge of God because when God, when God, when, when God exhaled, He exhaled revelation. So when you get revelation revealed, now remember, you will never be able to raise your Cain without revelation. Why? Because Cain is a part of life, and life is a marriage, but marriage is a mystery. And so the mystery to life, the mystery of all unions, the mystery of, of how things should work together must be revealed to you by God or you'll never get the revelation of the keys of the mystery of the marriage, which is called life. <laughs> life is heaven and earth. In the beginning, God is heaven and earth, ups and downs, lows and highs, and the evening and the morning were the first day. It is the union of the two that makes the one. And the two become one. Okay? Very key. So that's point number three. Understanding mysteries come by revelation. How do we get revelation? You constantly spend time with God. Revelation unites us directly to God. Okay? Now, let's move into Ephesians chapter three. That's where we were yesterday. Let's pick up right there. And I thank God he's helping me slow down. Like I'm not afraid to, to teach uh, 20 sessions or 30 sessions on one thing. I used to try to give you all. I could, I could teach for hours. I could teach for period, just forever. But I've learned now just to be patient with God. So we're going to do this next week and maybe the following week until God tells me to stop. Ephesians chapter 3, uh, and let's pick up at verse 8. Okay, verse 8. If you're just coming on, and you have, you have please, if you haven't hit that share button yet, please share this on your page. Go ahead and do a, a watch party. Allow the people who's connected to you to be blessed. Okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. And I'm going to deal with some points here. I want you to get this. He says, unto me who am less than the least of all the saints. This is, this is Apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. But he's saying, watch what he says. Unto me who is least than the less than all the saints. Um, you got to realize that the grace is applied to you. Grace is given. Every man is given a measure of faith. Every one of these keys you have experienced in the time you've been born. The love of God. You are here because of God's love. You are here because of God's grace. You are here by faith, whether you know it or not. And truth is what released you. Okay? Paul says here, even though he considered himself to be least among all the people. He says, I'm least. Watch this. Unto me, who am least in the least who are less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given. You got to understand that God has given you keys. God has given you the understanding of how to live your life, even when you think you are the lowest. Even when it looked like you, you said, I can't sing. I, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. Uh, uh, I don't really know how to worship God that well. Uh, I, I, I don't play any sports. Uh, I don't play any musical instruments. Even when you think you are the least of all the saints, I, I don't even know what gift I am in the body of Christ. I don't even know what my purpose is. Even when you think you are the least, God has given you, watch this, keys to unlock the complication of your mystery of your own life. He said, I'm the least, I'm, I'm less than the least of all the saints, but a mystery was given to me. You got to start understanding that the, that the mystery to your life, God has given you the keys to unlock, the grace to unlock it. Paul understood. Now this, he's talking about the dispensation of grace, but everybody has a mystery within themselves. 
I'm giving you something so powerful today. When you unlock the mystery to how to solve your own oneness with God, you'll be able to use those keys to help other people. The, the keys that unlock you is also the keys that unlock your brother. This is called atonement. We are one. I am my brother's keeper. And so when I can help me overcome my issues, that's the same thing to help you overcome your issue. You can't help nobody until you help yourself. And so you got to understand what you carry and quit thinking everybody else's life is so complicated when yours is complicated. But it doesn't matter because God has given you keys to the mystery. And the mystery is to show you how to free yourself. And when you can free yourself, watch this then you can help free other people. This is what it's all about. Why do I have issues in my life? So that you can relate to the issues in your brother. So you can relate to the issues of your sisters. Don't think you going through something that your sister ain't going through, that your brother ain't went through. When you say, how do I deal with this sexuality in my life? I love God, but I, oh, at night I get so lonely. When you understand how to defeat loneliness in your own life, then you can help the next man defeat loneliness in his because it's the key that unlocks it. But it starts at the house of Israel. It starts at the home. And when you can pastor your own members, how are you going to pass the members of the church when you can't pass your fingers? You can't pass your own eyes. You're less than you can't pass your own ears. You can't pass your own tongue. But when you know how to pass your own tongue and your own eyes and your own ears, when you know how to pass your own body, you know how to be circumcised from your flesh, not, not sanctified waist up, but sanctified waist down, then you can help somebody else with their sexuality. But you got to know that the keys to your complication start within you and if you don't look within you to see the keys in you you'll never see the keys that's in other people so you can't appreciate your brother because you can't appreciate you the keys that unlock your value is in you and when you can value this dust that has treasures when you can say I was nasty selfish but I'm blessed and highly favored because I got the mysteries of my life and I don't care how low I think of myself I no, I have the keys to tell me that I am higher than what I think. I got to get to the mysteries. So Paul starts out with the complication. I am less of the least of all the saints. But even though that's how I feel about myself in the spirit of humility, I know one thing God still gave me a mystery. I got a mystery. I got a mystery. And not only that, I may see myself as less among the least, but I got something that you don't have. I got keys to something. You're holding a mystery. And when you overcome what you've been through, please come by my house and show me how to do it. When I was young in the ministry, and I would be at churches and people would testify how I ain't had sex for five years, and I'm single, and I love God, and I thank God for keeping me. I used to hear those testimonies, and as soon as I got off the pulpit, I would go to him, hey, Tell me how you did that, because I'm still struggling with mine. I love God, too. But how did you go five years without having sex? Can you please tell me how you did it? Because I don't have that testimony right now. See, I wanted to know the keys, because we love to talk and, and, and testify, and we need it. But don't be telling me a lie. I want to know how you overcome because I'm sweating at night. I'm calling people I shouldn't be calling. Uh, come on. I want to know. People say, I've been delivered from pornography. Well, tell me the mystery of how do you be by yourself at night, access to the telephone, access to, to all the uh, uh, iPhone 10, and you still don't watch the pornography. Please tell me, because it's a mystery. It's a mystery, but the keys is in you. When you going to share how you overcame? Well, I don't have, I, I'm not materialistic. Show me how you got more money than you need in the bank and you still don't buy what you want, but you buy what you need. Can you please talk to me? Because we love to get up and tell stuff, but I want to know how you're doing. What key did you use to unlock it? Because you got people sweating and marrying the wrong people. You got people fornicating on the slide. How did you overcome what you ever, I know it's a mystery because many people, there's a whole lot of saints love God, but keep messing 
mess it up. They love God, but they keep lying. How did you stop lying? Was you really a real liar? Because I was a liar for real. Oh, oh, how did you overcome depression? Because I'm depressed all the time. We got to have somebody unsolve the mysteries that is in their lives so they can reveal the keys to the next man. Let me tell you what to do when sex not at your door. What do you do when you know you can get away with this and you can make a lot of money? What do you do? How do you do the right thing when the wrong thing is easier? How do you stand tall when the beautiful woman, people say, well, I ain't been with nobody for years. Let's talk. Have you not been with nobody for years because then nobody wants you? Because it's easy to say that I, I don't have that sexual problem because don't nobody wants you. But I want to know what do you do when she fine as wine, she 36, 24, 36, long hair, all the things you may like. When he tall, handsome, uh-oh, his breath don't smell, he got good money, he drive a Mercedes beer. I want to know the mystery of how you solve this union. How did you stay connected to God? How did you stay on your face? Come on. Come on. Come on. Because there's a cane. There's a cane in my life. Cane of lust. A cane of depression. A cane of insecurity. There's a cane. How do you feel good about yourself when you don't have beautiful skin? When you got one eye like Leah in the Bible? How did you feel good about yourself Talk to me. How did you overcome the cane of insecurity? How did you, how did you overcome trust issues? Yes, we got trust issues because the last person I trust, they took everything out of my house. The last person I trust, they, they broke my heart. How did you do it? That's it. I want to know how did you, how did you receive the love, the grace, the faith, the truth to unlock this mystery? You better quit thinking that people just don't want to live right. It's a mystery to holiness. There's a mystery to sanctification. There's a mystery to dedication. Paul, Paul struggled with it. When I would do good, evil is always present. Who's going to deliver me? Oh, wretched man that I am. You can't get delivered until you admit how wretched you are. See, we're delusional. But we got to get to the keys. Oh, my God. Man, time be flying. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3. That was just the first verse. Unto me, hit that share button, come on. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. When you struggle with this to, to, to get the keys, to understand the keys, when God begins to reveal to you the keys that you need, you have to accept God's love. You have to accept God's grace. You have to accept the faith of God that God gives you a measure of faith, measure of grace. Accept God's truth. You, you get the riches. I have learned to get the riches. When you're hearing me speak and you're hearing that anointing on my life, that comes from the riches that I've, I've received the revelation of how to handle my cane. It caused me to be rich in God because I know what to do now. See, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. I'm, God is going to reveal illumination and light has come. Okay? So I'm going to give you a natural example. If you are single, and even if you're married, but especially if you're single. I'm going to preach today because I'm sweating. Uh, if you're single, and it's about 11 o'clock at night, and you can't sleep, and Cain says, well, call Johnny. Call, call Diane. Come on. Come on, let's talk. Let's be real. It's about 11 o'clock at night. You can't sleep. Cain going to tell you to start making phone calls. Cain going to say, well, go ahead and get on that site. Go ahead and get on that dating site. Cain going to say, you know what? You, are, you up here shouting and praising God, but you got to go to bed by yourself. And Cain going to make you feel bad about, you know, you ain't got nobody to be with you. And you're a beautiful lady. You can't find no man. Come on. You can't find no woman. There's no woman who loves you and supports you for who you are. And you're a good man. Cain don't say all these things. Now, how do you do that? How do you deal with Cain? How do you raise Cain in these situations? Okay. Well, first of all, you got to acknowledge this. You got to acknowledge that this is a reality and that the voices of Cain will begin to speak. The voices of Cain. Cain speaks from the ground. He speaks from the flesh. Okay. You got to understand that. That will happen. Okay, how spiritual you are and quit playing games. 
Okay? And quit getting up and going to Walmart in the middle of the night. Come on, you you going to buy some toothpaste. You are on Walmart because you're looking for a man. You're looking for a woman. The reason why uh, uh, Facebook is so popular because people be on Facebook. You're looking for a hookup. Because Cain is telling you, you you're, you're about to turn 40. You still ain't got no kids. Come on. Cain talk to you. Now, what do you do? How do you raise Cain? Because you can't get past this. And the truth of the matter is, I'm talking to single people, but you can be married. She can be laying in the bed with you and came to show up. They say, aren't you tired of the same old, same old? Don't you want something different? I'm talking to you. See, we play games. And the reason why we don't know how to live, because we act like, I don't have that problem since I got married. Quit playing games. You do have that problem. Because Cain can't die. You got to raise Cain. Now, you can be handling the problem, but don't act like the problem don't exist because you got the flesh to deal with every day. You got to know how that when they show up, and I'm dealing with this, and I'm going to deal with another one in a minute. But when you're dealing with in this aspect, first thing you got to do, if you're strong enough, first of all, you got to have enough word in your mind, in your spirit, to fight against that, to recognize that's just the devil. There you go again. You're trying to steal me. You're trying to rob me. You're trying to kill some passion. You have to know that when these voices show up, that means that you are at one step away from another place in God. You are at one place. The enemy only shows up when it's time for you to transform or trying for, time for you to transcend. And so he tries to stop the development of your growth. He's a studier of how things grow. And so when you have these visitations, this is indicating to you that there's a level of, of growth is about to happen. In order for something to grow, it has to leave, watch this, it has to rise higher to where, to, than where it was. So the enemy sends these things, but he doesn't send them from external, he releases them from internal. The devil has an internal position in your life. He, he, he has an internal position. And his position internally is from your flesh. That's why most of the time the enemy is not necessarily the devil. The enemy is in a me. In me is the enemy. Because in my flesh dwells no good thing. I live in this flesh, but there's nothing good about this flesh. Okay? I got to be able to recognize that this is not good. It's bringing me against the will of God. I got to know what to do. First of all, I got to know that just because I have, because you can't stop thoughts from coming. You only can determine how long they stay. Write that down. You cannot, you cannot stop thoughts from coming, but you only can determine how long they stay. You got to cast these things down. Okay? Right? Very key. Very key. And so when you do that, you got to say, that's the trick of the enemy. I see what you're trying to do, but I'm going to use that. I'm going to raise that situation. I'm going to raise it. So since the enemy has showed up in my flesh, he's speaking again. You'll notice that when you're in worship, you're praising God. All depends on how how you can go into worship. You may not have these visitations. A lot of times, the flesh speaks when it's bored. When you're not using your flesh in the purpose of God, it speaks. My, when I was struggling with that particular issue, every time I would get bored, it would show up. I can be praising God, I can be teaching, I can be playing the drums, but if I ever get quiet to myself, that sexuality out of my flesh would rise up. It would come. You did good all day, but it wasn't until you, at night, you sat down to relax, and here come a thought about pornography. I'm teaching today, because I'm not going to teach this in theoretical form and not show you how to apply it, because you got preachers dealing with pornography. Dealing with sexuality, dealing with lust, dealing with depression. You got people who love God, who's dealing with suicidal spirits, dealing with low self-esteem. Okay? When this happens, I got to show you what to do. You got to be aware that it's, it's within you. Boredom can release the mindset of the flesh. Boredom. Boredom. Boredom when you don't have, you don't know how to master. Because the flesh... The mind of the flesh does not want you to know how to be quiet and to be silent and grow in God. One of the greatest keys to growing in God is learning how to grow in silence. Knowing how to be still. Most people cannot steal their mind. They don't know how to be still. Be still. Be, 
The word be is a sustaining verb. Be, B-E. It is a sustaining verb. So when you tell your son, be quiet, he's crying. You telling him, be quiet. That is a sustaining verb. It is an action that is sustaining. Be, stating verb. Verb shows action. It is a, it is a sustaining verb. So God wants us to be still. Most of the time, the flesh robs you out of those moments of learning, learning how to be still. It's keys in being still. That's why I said be still and see the salvation of the Lord. If you can be still, you can see that salvation. You can see that you're not stuck. You can see the devil not going to win. You can see that I'm not an adulteress. I'm not a fornicator. But you got to learn how to be still. The enemy uses things of, the, of Cain to rob you. To rob you of that moment of be, because you'll get revelation. And if you get revelation of his love, of his grace, of faith, of truth, you'll overcome Cain. Okay? Real talk. I see you, brother Mike. <laughs> okay, so and, and you know it's without a fight, but you got, but you in the fight is mental. It's in the battle. It's in the mind. You got to say this in the mind. Okay, so you, I'm, I'm making you aware of Cain in, in, when it comes to sexuality. Boredom. Watch this. He wants to steal the moment of quietness. Also, he doesn't want the word of God to be able to take a seat. Who wins in your life determines about what sits down in your life. If the word sits in your life, if it sit, it'll take a stand. If the word sit, it'll take a stand. We sit in heavenly places. You got to know how to sit in order to take a stand. The word will stand up once it's sit down. It needs a position to place itself. Okay? The enemy is after that. Cain knows that if you be still and get a revelation, the word will take a seat. Once it takes a seat and then it stands up, as Brother Mike was saying, you're moving ahead of me again, Brother Mike, it will begin to lead. It will begin to lead. Okay? It will begin to lead. All right? Very key. So important. So important. Okay? Very key. What's sexuality? Then the battle begins. You allow the word to fight against that urge. You understand that urge, that, that temporary urge is trying to destroy a internal destiny. The devil wants you to have a one night stand that ruins your life. He wants you to make a, a decision, a temporary decision that becomes a permanent uh, destruction in your life. <clears throat> okay? God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Feel the Holy Ghost. So you got to be able to handle this case. Did you get it? Because it's mysteries. I'm giving you an example. Okay? Man, my time is about up. All right. The unsearchable riches of Christ. Let me stop there. Father, I thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. You're showing us how to raise Cain, how to live in harmony with you in spite of our circumstances. I'm praying for those right now who are struggling. We're praying right now, Lord, that you teach us how to overcome, how to be free from all forms of pornography, how to have dominion, 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 our freedom is in our dominion, to have dominion over the fish of the seas, dominion over the fowls of the air, or dominion over everything that creeps upon the earth. Oh God, we bless you for this assignment and how you're teaching us how to be successful even while we are living in our flesh. To cast down every thought and imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. God, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Go back and rewatch this over and over again. Some powerful things today, powerful things today. And remember the keys. Many of you right now are still struggling with your cane. You haven't learned how to raise it properly yet. But don't forget, God's love, 
God's grace, the faith that you have, don't lose your faith. And God's truth that will set you free. Watch every one of these teachings. Go back and watch 13, I think it was 12 or 13 of uh, Your Name Shall Speak. And then continue on because that's really was this is a continuation of that. And then watch Living While Raising Cain. We're going to be blessed. Have a good weekend. Walk in God's favor. And I will see you Monday, same time, same place. We'll continue on a part three, how to live while raising cake. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Walk in God's favor.